do is play a game where we get to test your knowledge of what is in season and what isn't. Mm -hmm. So behind you, and it's all right, again, there's no shame in rowing. You get it wrong, that's fine. <laughs> um, there's some tables set up and I'd like you to break into groups of um, five, maybe five to six people. And I've put on the tables a whole bunch of vegetables. Now, some of these vegetables and fruits will actually be across the seasons. So a lot of our fruit and vegetables actually occur in two seasons, one to two seasons. So the ones where you'll see there's more than one of the fruit or vegetable means that it occurs in um, more than one season, just to give you a hint. But when you only see one vegetable it only occur or fruit, then it occurs only in one season. And you get to spend about five minutes trying to align the fruit and veg to the season. So get into groups of five and then give it a go and we'll, we'll check back in at the end. But there's the one must be somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. they they call it um, summer, summer and winter. Spring and summer. Winter. Spring and summer. Yeah. In the middle. <laughs> well, no, no, you, you she's got, got you two, two so you have one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's two of them. There's two of them. Spring and summer. Spring. That'd be summer. This one? No, the orange. Oh, no, 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 and carrots. Yeah, I'm going to close that. I'm growing carrots now. Maybe autumn. Would it still be spring then? Growing, but when are they ready? Maybe spring. Yeah, that's fine. You want to go into winter, yeah? So let's put that into summer because it looks like it. So it shows us how disconnected we are really to what is seasonal. Because we're just, uh, we're just um, spoiled with abundance, we can have whatever we want all year round basically. Um, but the benefits of eating seasonally are not only that it tastes better, that it's better for you. It's also environmentally better. So there's less chemicals used in the storage, in the fuels used in the refrigeration and freezing processes. There's also less waste. So through the, you know, the packaging and all that that happens and the spoilage and the marks. So supermarkets, they just chuck that out. If there's any mark, then that just goes straight into the bin and that's wasted, often just taken to landfill, not composted. So there's a massive amount of waste of food simply from the distribution, not even before it gets to your plate to, to consume it. Yeah, and the other benefit of having seasonal foods is that you get more variety. So in terms of resistance to pesticides and different bugs that occur in the environment, if you've got five different species of apples or banana passion fruit, then it's more likely one of those strands will survive and become resistant to that bug rather than them all being kind of, you know, um, devastated by one insect. They'll have a different immunity because they're different strands of fruit and veg. So that's just a, f a bit about the benefits of eating seasonally. Now how, let's just brainstorm together, what are some ways that you can do that in Sydney? That you can find seasonal foods and eat them, grow your own, that's definitely the best way to do it. <laughs> grow your own. And if you can't grow your own, organic market, yep, farmer's market, that's a great one. Um, what are some other things? Direct from the farmer? Yeah, yep, definitely. Um, well, I guess the farmers markets can sometimes, there can be farmers there at the markets. Or you can become involved in a um, community supported agriculture practice such as Food Connect or organisations like that, which buy directly from a farmer. There's no middle person in between. So. They're called Community Supported Agriculture. And I know that there's quite a few Food Connect hubs around the eastern suburbs. 
join a community garden. That's a great idea. So if you don't know how to grow your own, you can learn from others how to grow. Well, it's so hard to get into any of them. I mean, there's a long list. It is tricky, but I've been involved in the Coogee Community Garden and they've just got their DA. So if you want to get involved, that one's open. <laughs> yes, just got the DA approved recently. Community Garden. You can check those out. Um, there's also some um, schemes called land share where someone will actually, uh, and you can approach neighbours as well, if they've got their backyard and they're not using it, then you can say, I will farm for you, I'll grow the veggies and give you half of the crops. So there's a website called land share where you can do that, you can register either your interest in wanting to garden in someone else's backyard or that um, you've got some land and you don't really want to do the hard yarns. If someone else wants to come in and you get the benefits, then that's a pretty good deal too. Yeah, community gardens. Um, there's also food co-ops. So there is um, at Barrett House, there is a rhubarb co-op, have a little box scheme there where they buy organic fruit and veg um, that you can get. Is that every Wednesday, Richard? Yeah. Thursday, every Thursday. Um, but there's also a Falfa co-op in Newtown. There's a few uni ones at UNSW, Chippendale. They're all on your sheet that I've um, given you, the handout where to go for, um, for cooperative around Sydney, co-ops. Any other ideas in terms of buying seasonal? You can ask your food truck. Okay. You can ask, yeah. That's a great way of not only raising awareness that, you, that there's demand for seasonal, but getting them thinking about, oh, okay, um, where, where am I buying this from? Yeah, there, there are a few little shops around Sydney that still have local lemons and local things like that and it's great to, to buy and, and encourage them to, to get more in, definitely. So ask your grocer. Yes? Sorry. Yes. So what about if you're stuck in coals and that's all you have? Yep. So that's where these guides come in very handy. So if, you're, if you are stuck in coals, and that's your only possibility, then just using your own choice, like just backing away from the tomatoes and going, no, I'm not going to eat them, I'm going to eat these because these are in season. And just being disciplined yourself to know what to buy. Taking these guides with you, they're really useful as well. Um, and just ha using your own choice, personal choice around what to do with that. There's a lot of trees on the street, but I don't know, like what's the legal you know, requirements? Can you just go and pick? tree on the grass birch? Um, well, Richard, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but from my, my knowledge, if it's overhanging off, off the fence onto the actual council footpath, then it's um, public land, so you can pick the mulberries or whatever's... Yeah, there's actually a website called Scrummages or something, where it lists where all the fruit plants are in your region on Google Maps, so you can actually go and... Um, yeah, where the hot spots are. So the food doesn't go to waste. Because I mean, you always see just, you know, mulberries wasted on the pavement. So this way you can go and make mulberry pie and share it with your neighbours and enjoy it rather than it going to waste. So I've just handed around these little sustainable seafood guides just to touch on um, what I think one of you mentioned earlier in terms of how do we choose, I mean, fish don't really have their season. So in terms of meat, it's tricky to know how to buy seasonally. Um, but the seafood, the oceans um, at this point in time are really severely depleted. And so using these guides, you can actually get an app as well. You can download the app for this. It's a really good way of knowing how to choose your meat or choose your fish well. Now I think we're up to, um, sorry, 80% of our fish stocks are almost, you know, bordering non-sustainable yields. So knowing what to buy, what not to buy, and when to buy is a really good um, tool to have. It's just having that information there at your fingertips when you're down at the fish markets, in the supermarket, whatever it is. There's also a little um, signature on this. It's the Marine Conservation Society. So if you see that on fish, that means that it is sustainable and that you can that's been approved by this body as being something that you can eat um, sustainably, you're not depleting the reserves by doing so. So it's a good thing to know as well.